as far as uh, tre treatment of addiction is concerned. So you can add your own uh, interventions as far as these persons are concerned. So what would be the difference as far as uh, these interventions are concerned? Again, those uh, with low risk would only require community-based interventions which can be provided by faith-based organizations, NGOs, no, and other service providers. On the other hand, those with mild substance use disorder would now require a structured community-based program. Structured. This means uh, they have a schedule, they have modules that they need to comply with. No? And this can be, still be provided by, again, faith-based organizations, no? uh, NGOs, and other concerned uh, private organizations. No? So these two, these two community-based programs, the only difference between the two of them, one would be a more structured program with modules that we need to follow. And later, it will be presented to you by uh, CCF. No? And these two, the community-based interventions would not require accreditation from the Department of Health. No? These two would not require accreditation from the Department of Health. But uh, for you to be safe, no? uh, because there are some, I don't want to mention specifics, but there are some faith-based organizations which may pose danger to these individuals. Um, is anybody here a member of the Scientology group? You're not familiar with the Scientology group? Tom Cruise, John Travolta, and the others? Okay, they have, they have a structured program which uh, they submitted to the Department of Health for evaluation, and we found their program unsound. No? And, uh, they require massive dosages of vitamins uh, to be given to individuals on a daily basis, which we feel might poison these individuals. No? So we told them, we cannot accept their program. So they said, Scientology Group, you're not uh, familiar with this. No? So be careful. There are some faith-based organizations which, uh, well, they inject their own agenda. No? And uh, the only way we can safeguard you guys, no? the implementers from uh, these organizations, would be to provide you with a list of acceptable faith-based organizations in our website. So if you find the names of the faith-based organizations in our website, the DDB and DOH website, then at least you can be assured that they are fairly safe, their program is sound uh, for uh, application at the community level. No? So just be careful, no? because these two, both community-based intervention does not require accreditation from the Department of Health. Okay? On the other hand, the outpatient program as well as the inpatient program would require accreditation from the Department of Health. No? And these two would be both facility-based. No? So the patient goes to a facility, it may be an outpatient, pro, uh, an outpatient facility or an inpatient facility. So on an outpatient facility, they report twice, thrice a week. They are given structured program. Right now, we have been implementing the intensive outpatient program uh, matrix uh, matrix uh, that is uh, also being endorsed by NIDA, the National Institute on Drug Abuse uh, in the U.S. No? So we have a structured program for outpatient facility base. On the other hand, this one, when they go in, according to 9165, according to the law, they are required to stay in the facility for at least six months to one year. No? So it's in the law. Uh, as far as 9165 is concerned. And after they finish the primary program in, all, uh, in both instances, both outpatient and inpatient program, they are required by law to submit themselves on an aftercare program for at least 18 months. Okay? So both inpatient uh, admissions and outpatient admissions, facility-based, would require an 18-month 
aftercare program. And again, they will go back to the community, no? and uh, so that we could monitor them. Now, let's go back to the question of cost. Uh, because it's a very good question, and uh, our country is not that uh, well off no? uh, to really provide ideal logistics. As far as these two are concerned, community-based program, programs are concerned, it will entail minimal cost because you will be using you will be using the current structures, the current st systems already already available at the community level. You already have your municipal health units. You already have your rural health units at the community level. You already have your service providers, church-based organizations, no? narcotics anonymous support groups available. All that needs to be done is to map them. You need to map them. You need to coordinate with them. And this should be done by the local government unit, the Anti-Drug Abuse Council. It will not entail cost, no? minimal at best. So these two. On the other hand, as far as the outpatient and the inpatient is concerned, yeah, it will entail some expense on the part of the patient and even on the part of the, uh, the, the, the families themselves. No? But if we can provide intervention, remember, I mentioned earlier, 90% of these surrenderies would require only the two, no? the community-based as well as the structured community-based program. So if we can prevent them from, uh, from going to the outpatient and inpatient facilities, then at least uh, that would be more cost-efficient. No? Right now, admittedly, we don't have the structures in place. And uh, the only reason why we're now trying to come up with a, whole, with, with a new system you know, is because we were surprised at the number of surrenderies that we encountered because of the Duterte, of the Duterte administration. You know? uh, it never happened before. Even during the martial law time, even during martial law, we never had these numbers of surrenderies. No? So, admittedly, we were caught unaware. And then we realized we need to have structures, we need to have systems at the community level, which should have been done before. No? Hindsight. Unfortunately, we, it is the drug concern has only been uh, prioritized uh, as far as this administration is concerned. No? But uh, again, the, as, uh, on a positive note, we're now trying to address this issue. No? And we're hoping that we will come up with a good implementation of this algorithm uh, to see what will happen next, no? if, we will, if we can reduce the, the problem significantly. We already have several pilot sites. We will be pilot we, we are already piloting this in Rizal. We will be piloting it in uh, San Juan in Quezon City and we're hoping that uh, this will be done on a nationwide basis. Any questions on the algorithm? The provisional board regulation is already being circulate, circulated. Uh, remember that Dangerous Drugs Board is composed of 17 member agencies. So you can imagine, no? 17 secretaries need, needs to sign this issuance. And so far we already have five signing the issuance. We still need four more signatures to get a quorum. No? But we're hoping that before the, uh, I think you're familiar with Masa Masi. You're familiar with Masa Masi, the program also being endorsed by DILG. It will be launched on September 28th. No? And uh, we expect that uh, before that, this issuance will already be signed by uh, the secretaries. No? So, any questions as far as the algorithm is concerned? So, the enforcers would have minimal role as far as this algorithm is concerned. What would be referred to you 
would be patient or would be surrenderist with pending cases. No? So for those without pending cases or pending violations of 9165, they will be they will be provided services purely by the local government unit. No? Siguro the role of uh, the enforce, enforcement sector as far as this is concerned would be to provide the local government unit with the list, no? provide them with the, with the addresses, contact numbers of the surrenderies so that the uh, paramedical units of the local government units can uh, actually follow up the, uh, the patients themselves. No? In fact, they can even go door to door, community level, to encourage them, to encourage them to, to attend to the various programs being offered. And that will be the role of the paramedicals mostly, of the local government units. Any questions? Now, I will leave to you a copy of the provisional guidelines. Now, the provisional guidelines basically states whatever was discussed now, in the algorithm. Uh, it provides guidelines on how to handle minors, for example, 15 years old and below. So it should be the uh, local social welfare officer who should have first contact no, as far as these surrenderies are concerned. So it provides uh, you with the details of uh, what to do and how to do it. No, but basically, what we discussed 